Hey everyone, this is Roman. A lot of cubers who solve big blind struggle with wings because as you memorize them and you meet your buffer at some point, which means you have a cycle break, there's no easy way to tell whether you have memorized all the wings on the cube or you have some wings left to be memorized. In this video, I'll teach you the method that will completely eliminate this problem for you. So not only you'll be able to tell whether you have uh, any wings to be memorized yet, you'll be able to tell exactly where those wings are. The method was suggested to me years ago by Danny Minsaev. Uh, however, I only started using it like relatively recently and I managed to set European records for both 4-blind and 5-blind. So I guess it works. It is based on tracking, so as you memorize wings, you put your fingers on certain positions and uh, those fingers are going to tell you where you have to search for unmemorized wings later. Here's the general idea of how the method works. You start memorizing wings having your hands in this position, so your fingers are on the centers or in the air, so none of your fingers are uh, in the edge. You look at your buffer, whatever it is, let's say it's UFL, this one, you should go to there, so you memorize this wing and you put your finger on the entire BL edge, like so. And uh, this wing should go to there, so you put your finger here on the DR edge. This should go to here, so you put your finger there, and as you memorize wings, you put your finger but only on the L and R layers. So if you have wings from the M layer, you just ignore it for the moment. So you memorize wings putting your fingers on those positions and at some point you will meet a wing that should go to uh, the position where your finger is already. So let's say I have to memorize this wing but I have my finger here on the UR edge and so in this case I just remove my finger from here. right? And that means that those two wings are all memorized already. So at some point I'll have my fingers in this position which means that one of those two is memorized, one of those two is memorized, and one of these, and one of these, and uh, everything else is either not memorized at all, or memorized completely, like this one. So I go and, uh, let's say, put my finger here, remove my finger from there, put it on the center, uh, remove finger from here, and uh, at some point I'll meet my buffer. And uh, at this point I know that uh, one of those two is not memorized yet, one of these two and one of these two are not memorized. And I can break into a new cycle from, let's say, this wing. And I go and memorize it, uh, put it to here, remove my finger, put it to there, remove my finger, and uh, let's say one of those two goes to here, so I remove my finger from this position, and uh, now I know that every single wing is memorized and I have no other wings left to be memorized. This is the general idea, so now let's just go deeper into the method and I'll show you an example solve. I'll be doing the example solve as if my buffer is UFL, white green, which is currently here. The scramble should be in the description and on your screen. I start memorizing with uh, BD, which is here, and uh, since it's on the M layer, I don't put my finger here on BD. This should go to here on the BR, so I put my finger there. BR, which goes to FR, which goes to LF, which goes to DF, so I don't put my finger here, which goes to DR, to then BU, BU goes to FU, which goes to LB, LB is here, which goes to FL, and uh, now the FL has already my finger the entire LF or FL edge, so I remove my finger from FL, I should go to UR here, which which goes to RD, so I remove my finger from RD, that goes to DL, right there, and here's my buffer, but I still put my finger here, uh, which means that one of those two is memorized. So at this point I can start the new cycle from uh, either of these edges, I mean one of these edges or this or this or this one. So starting a new cycle with this system can be tricky. What I do is I just mark the beginning of new cycle with my nail. So uh, start with RU, this one, put my nail here. From RU it goes to LD. Here I remove my finger from LD. 
which goes to RU again, so I remove my finger. And then I start the new cycle with uh, RF right here. From RF, it goes to FD here. Don't put my finger here. From FD, it goes to UB, so here, which goes to DB here, which goes to RF. So end of the cycle with RF, remove my finger. And now I can tell that my fingers are here and here on the um, on the LB and RB edges. So I start the new cycle from BL. So here, BL goes to um, goes to RB, right there. Remove my finger, which goes to UL here, which goes to LU here. So I put my finger there to denote that I have memorized this edge, and this edge should go to there. So I can. Uh, as soon as I put the finger here to memorize this edge, I remove my finger. Uh, that means that I have memorized the other edge, which goes to B, BL again. So the only finger left on the cube, so I remove it from here. And uh, in this position, I can tell that I have memorized everything. And uh, I don't have any wings left to be memorized. I have said earlier that you don't track wings in the M layer. But it's just because you only have so many fingers to mark the L layer and R layer edges. So the extreme position would look like this when you have all of your wings on those layers half memorized. However, you can still track wings in the M layer using your feet. For instance, for the UB edge, you use your left foot, which initially stays like this on the ground. When you memorize one of those two, you raise your left foot up, and when you memorize another one, you put it back down. And same thing for the right foot and for the BD edge. You memorize one of those, you raise your foot up, and then if you have a cycle break and your foot is up, that means that you have one of those two unmemorized, and you can enter the new cycle from this. However, you should be aware that this method has one potential pitfall. For instance, look at this edge between orange and white sticker. Those two are swapped, and those occupy the entire LU edge, like this two swap cycle occupies the entire edge, that means that when you track wings using your fingers, you will never break into this cycle. But those cases are very rare and they are pretty easy to notice, so I don't put too much attention to it, and if I notice the two swap on the same edge, then I just memorize it as a separate cycle at the end of my memo. You can imagine potentially similar cases, for example, as of this wing would go to here, which goes to there, which goes to there, which goes to there again. So a separate cycle occupying the entire LF and RF edges. But as I said, those are very, very rare and uh, they are very easy to notice. So I don't put attention to it. So that's about it. I'd be glad to hear your thoughts on this method or maybe if you have some ideas on how it can be improved or extended, you can leave them down below. Happy blind keeping!